God tells Ezekiel that the mountains will be thrown down and the steep pathways will collapse and every wall will fall to the ground. Does this mean that literally every wall on the planet will fall? Or, that, or just that every wall in Israel and the Middle East will fall? Does the prophecy mean that literally every person on the planet will be physically shaken? Or does it mean that the destruction will be so great throughout Israel and the Middle East that everyone on earth will be emotionally shaken by fear, by higher gas and oil prices, and by other less physical but no less powerful forces? There's a huge amount of Bible prophecies that are taking place in Israel right now, which shows that Israel is truly the center of end times Bible prophecies. We are going to discuss some of them in today's video. According to Bible prophecy, four powerful kings would run into the world arena with two goals in the last days before the rapture would occur. First, to reign as global tyrants, conquer the world and remove everything that mentions what we believe in Jesus, as well as to promote a one world order, which we already know that many nations are gathering at this time and attempting to establish such a system in the world. Second is to conquer Israel and exterminate the Jewish people. Their goal is to seize control of Jerusalem and prepare for the anointing of the fake Christ. Ezekiel chapter 37 verse 28 Then the nations will know that I the Lord make Israel holy, when my sanctuary is among them forever. Currently Israel is surrounded by nations clamoring for his blood. Anti-Semitism is on the rise in Europe and the United States, and it's even praised in liberal institutions among our youth. According to the Bible, there will be major disputes in Israel during the end times. As a result, the period is referred to as the Tribulation, the Great Tribulation, and the time of Jacob's trouble. I have to say that it is not present anti-Semitism that should intimidate us, but rather what the future will be if we don't combat anti-Semitism today. So by all means, I think that we need to tell our stories uh, from the personal perspective. We're just normal human beings. We need to be united. Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 7 Alas, this day is so great that there is none like it. It's a time of distress for Jacob, yet he shall be saved out of it. So, is Israel ready for the end of time war? Well, according to this state of events, it seems like Israel is preparing itself for the end of time's war, as we are aware of the fact that several different nations are gathering against it to fulfill what the Antichrist would want them to do with this piece of God-gifted land. This is something what you can call a satanic plan that he would want different nations to do. Zechariah chapter 14 verse 2 For I will gather all of the nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city will be captured, the houses plundered, the women ravished, and half the city exiled. But the rest of the people will not be cut off from the city. These prophecies are exactly something that Jesus told us about what would happen in the end of times. Luke chapter 21 verse 24 and they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and shall be led away captive into all nations, and Jerusalem shall be trodden down by the Gentiles, until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. We see that everything will be against Israel by the end of times, and that every nation would take its opportunity to attack and demolish this state. Many doubters around the world believe that God has forsaken the people of Israel, and that Israel has been reborn solely by man. Does that mean that God will leave the people of Israel? Isaiah chapter 41 verse 9 You, Israel, my servant, Jacob whom I have chosen, descendant of Abraham, my friend, you whom I have taken from the ends of the earth, and called from its remotest parts, and said to you, You are my servant, I have chosen you, and not rejected you. God has always intended to return the Jewish people to the land on his own terms, not man's. And, as the prophet said, after 19 centuries of global exile, the Jewish people are returning to the Holy Land from all four corners of the globe. Isaiah chapter 49 says, I'm going to stretch out my hand to the Gentile nations. Means God says, one day I'm going to use non-Jewish people and they will carry your sons and daughters back to their homeland. And this is exactly what is being fulfilled before our eyes and what we are doing and many other Christians are doing. This is again something of great importance to see how God is preparing this land for the end of times and then eventually how everything will fall in place of the sacred land. 
Israel is unquestionably a heavy stone weighing on the world's inhabitants. That stone will become heavier and heavier as the nation of Israel becomes more and more contentious in the eyes of the world. This isn't a conflict between the UN and Israel or between Palestinians and Israelis. A conflict is brewing between the nations of the world and God. The world has turned against Israel, which is a big sign of the end times. Amos chapter 9 verse 14 through 15 I will bring back my exiled people, Israel. They will rebuild the ruined cities and live in them. They will plant vineyards and drink their wine. They will make gardens and eat their fruit. I will plant Israel in their own land, never again to be uprooted from the land I have given them. Now we know that Russia and China are settling themselves as well for the end time stage, where both nations will dominate the world government, or more specifically, the one world government. And these days, it seems as if Russia is depending on China for its dominance in the world. So we can say that a Russia that grows dependent on China only strengthens China's position on the world stage and strengthens China's efforts to undermine democracy around the world. It has the potential to exacerbate geopolitical tensions, particularly in Eastern Europe and Asia. At the China-Russia border, where you can see Russia, there are a lot of examples of cooperation between the two countries here, as Russia has become more dependent on China. We talked to Russian truck drivers who told us it's busy. China. We're good friends, he says about China. And what if Russia continues to align its diplomatic actions even more closely with Chinese objectives? China has shown little interest in collaborating with international security protocols or curbing nuclear weapon proliferation. It would undoubtedly strengthen China on the global stage, and we already know that China wishes to dominate the entire economy. Now all of this goes perfectly with what is mentioned in Revelation chapter 16 verse 12 that says, The sixth angel poured out his bowl in the great river, the Euphrates, and its water was dried up so that the way would be prepared for the kings from the east. The drying of the Euphrates River is described as an occurrence that prepares the way for the kings of the east. Putin's demise could be another such event. Russia may be weakening, but China may become even more powerful as a result, which will lead the world to the end times events mentioned in the book of Revelation, which is actually attacking Israel and Jerusalem. Revelation chapter 13 verse 1 And I saw the beast rising out of the sea, with ten horns and seven heads, with ten diadems on its horns and blasphemous names on its heads. In prophetic language, the sea refers to the world's nations. John is describing his observation of the world's nations. John is rivaling the approaching end times by drawing back the veil of time. This was predicted over 2,000 years ago and is finally ready to become a reality in the times we are living in today. The four kings, which are mentioned in the book of Revelation, are going to set the stage of the world in the last days. Out of these four kings, the king of the west will be commanded by the Antichrist, who will impose his mark on everyone's right hand or forehead. Those who do not cooperate will have their heads severed. Who is the Antichrist spoken of in 1 John 2.18? Dear children, the last hour is here, and you have heard that the Antichrist is coming. And already many such antichrists have appeared. From this we know that the last hour has come. He is also referred to as the man of lawlessness in 2 Thessalonians 2 and as the first beast from the sea in Revelation 13. The king of the west's objective is Israel. He will erect his image and proclaim himself to be God in Jerusalem. The world will be forced to worship the antichrist. His false prophet will summon fire from heaven to devour the sacrifice on the altar. These rulers, who are currently competing for position over the world, will encounter the kings and the lords of lords, and all his majesty will be defeated in the very end. Romans chapter 11 verse 26 And in this way, all Israel will be saved, as is written, The deliverer will come from Zion. He will banish ungodliness from Jacob. There's a lot of upheaval in Israel right now. Syria, Lebanon, Jordan, Saudi Arabia, Iran, Hamas, Islamic Jihad, Hezbollah, and other adversaries encircle Israel. But Israel's hostility and persecution is merely a foreshadowing of what would occur in the end times. Matthew chapter 24 verse 15 through 18. So when you see the abomination of desolation spoken by the prophet Daniel standing in the holy place, let the reader understand. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let the one who is on the housetop not go down to take what is in his house. And let the one who is in the field not turn back to take his cloak. As followers of Christ, we should know that our God created the universe and has vowed to rule and reign forever. He has absolute power both in heaven and on earth. He holds seven oceans in his grasp and calls the stars by name. 
Who is greater than him? We shouldn't be worried about those times. Rather, prepare ourselves so we can be in eternity with our Lord. With that, we'll end our video here. Let us know what your thoughts are on this in the comments section below. If you enjoyed today's video, then make sure to like the video and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to keep up with the most amazing content. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.